we are live. Welcome to Venom 2 Thought Re Review and Thoughts. Venom Let There Be Carnage. So Happy Spooktober. Brief off topic. Big fan of Amber Ruffin on late night with Seth, Ma Seth Myers. Loves her recent video talking about what Trump supposedly did for religion. Really glad to know she has her own show. I don't think I have the thing that her show is on, but I'm, just, I'm glad to know it's out there. Because before they mentioned that, I was watching that and I was like, I, she needs her own show. She is, she's too funny to just be like occasionally appearing on late night. Anyway. Right, so the, yeah, back on topic. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. Also, if you're only interested in the review, that part of the video is not the whole length of the video. To see its length, check the time codes in the description box. I watched this in a theater because where I live, COVID is under control. If you do not live in an area where COVID is under control, please do not watch this in a theater. No movie is worth risking spreading COVID, even if you think... You yourself will be safe. There's probably someone you might accidentally spread it to that you don't want to spread it to. Now, some people feel that the audio mix for this movie is too loud. I do have a slight hearing impairment. And I think there's a 50-50 chance that I had it before I watched the movie. And a 70-80 chance that I have forgotten math. This movie was a lot. I am currently dealing with some back pain, but I still have a lot to say about the movies that I watch. So I want to speak faster until my back feels better. And so, yeah, I start this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn if I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead and just in lower my index finger. Also, please note, I will not warn before spoilers for movies related to Spider-Man that came out before this one. That means every single Spider-Man movie that has come out before this one and the first Venom movie, because there are some things, yeah, but, you know, yeah, there's I, I can't spoil upcoming Spider-Man movies, even if you are watching this in the future. I can only talk, anyway. And as soon as I end the review itself, Please note, the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers for the movie, in addition to spoilers for other Spider-Man related movies. And uh, in, I will be discussing the ending and the mid credits scene, so yeah. So if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie, they're on the 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 range. I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2, and I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, Season 1 of What If, and... Right, so, content warning and or trigger warning. <laughs> Torture, kidnapping, gaslighting, mental illness xenophobia, murder including the death penalty, body horror, and I guess that is almost all of it. Yeah, that is. Now, Also, please note, I have a tendency to sometimes, when I'm discussing a sensitive subject, use descriptive terms that I consider neutral that other people consider negative. So, if I say something that sounds judgmental, it may very well just be that I take for granted that people know I'm being descriptive, not judgmental. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. No. Right, another thing that... Child abuse is another trigger. This. The movie is rated PG-13, and so is this video. 
Now, I'm not going to spend forever on this, but obviously the movie should be R-rated, not PG-13. It's absurd to make a movie if there's money in it. That's really the only, the only reason you would ever make a story like this. Like, I've read a bunch of comics featuring Carnage. I'm aware this is not the very first time. They the the 90s Spider-Man show also had Carnage and also toned him down. But I mean that was like a Saturday morning cartoon. This is a movie. Like yeah, anyway, I'm not going to spend forever on it. But yeah, it it should be it does push the PG-13 rating. There are several things in here that like years ago you would not have been able to get away with a PG-13. But yeah, you know, the as far as like violence goes, the movie implies a lot. It shows almost none of it, which, you know, I, f I feel like you, I, I don't want to sound like bloodthirsty or something. I just feel like if you're going to make a movie about a serial killer becoming a super powered serial killer maybe you want to show just a tiny bit of it I, I don't know anyway let's see so I rewatched the first one yesterday that was my third viewing the second viewing not in a theater basically since this movie first came out I've rewatched it every two years I, I mean, that is essentially the fact that the last time, let's see, why was it that I, I I'm not going to spend forever on this, I swear. I last watched it in 2019, maybe around the time that Far From Home came out, is that it? I, I don't know. Anyway, so this video is not going to contain any clips of any kind, most visual gets, is when I sometimes act something out. So feel free to watch something visual, like clips from the movie, in another tab. I won't mind. I'll know, but... I mean, I won't know. Of course, I'm not spying on you right now. I did leave part of my symbiote outside my out of sight of your house, but... Some kid thought he was cute, fed him some chocolate, and now he's ignoring me completely. I actually wrote that joke, terrible though it might be, before realizing how much of a romantic comedy this movie is. Anyway, anything negative I say in this video is not out of bitterness. I don't feel like the movie wasted my time. Nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video. It's not that I'm upset at how it compares to what it's adapting. I swear. Other movies like it, what I was expecting, the trailers and other marketing, the first movie in the series, I don't have some personal vendetta against anyone who worked on making it. To the best of my ability, the negative things I said in this video are fair criticisms based on budget, when it came out, what it was trying to achieve, etc. So in a lot of ways, this movie is like the first one, so I'm not going to mention all of the things where they're similar. I'm going to talk about the ways that they're different from one another, so I'm not just repeating myself. Now, in order to follow this movie's plot, you will have to have watched the first Venom. And I'm glad that that is the case, because this movie does build on what the first one set up. It doesn't always build very much. Like, some, sometimes it's like, well, I mean, people liked it the first time. No clue why. I, I don't know. Let's just do it again, I guess. Uh, let's okay. Let's go a little bit more intense with it. Well, it's not. I mean, it it worked the first time. It's just you know the yeah. There's the that's that's you you get the sense with this with you a sense of that with this movie a lot. But yeah. Let's see. Since we're still dealing with Corona, I want to thank you in this video. It's possible that I would touch my face. I think I already did a couple of times. I want to assure you I washed my hands carefully since the last time I was outside. And I will wash my hands again before going out. 
so this is my first viewing watched it today you know I got back from the theater and you know set up the the camera and yeah here we are so the movie is fresh in my mind and started recording pretty much as soon as I got home so the plot still in San Francisco Eddie is trying to put his life back together improve it enough that Anna will get back together with him but Venom's hunger and aggression make that difficult and he's the only one that insane serial killer Cletus Cassidy will talk to maybe he can get him to reveal where the last bodies are buried that would definitely help his career which is still recovering from the first one where he confronted Carlson Drake with info he shouldn't have had access to and got himself and his fiance and fired which led to her breaking off the engagement but for uh, let's see yeah I'm not gonna go into exactly how but Cletus gets some venom into him which leads to him developing a different symbiote that refers to itself as carnage in a number of ways more dangerous than venom and he definitely wants to free Francis Barrison from the institution where she is locked up and yeah you know we wonder can Venom possibly stop them Carnage is of course going to start the killing spree with his hairdresser the hair view was pointing in the first movie's post credit scene woof in the first movie the villain was evil Elon Musk I mean more evil than the real Elon Musk not by much, but still. So, in the first film, things just happen, things that shouldn't be able to. In this one, I mean... In this... There's something relatively similar. In this one, symbiotes can kind of do whatever... Like... Symbiotes can suddenly do things that... Are extremely convenient to the plot. I do quite like that part of what the movie is about is if Eddie will be able to redeem his reputation as a reporter by whether or not he can make some important discoveries about a serial killer in the comic books. That's actually how he ruined his reputation. He got some details wrong, accidentally blamed the wrong guy for serial killing, and when Spider-Man caught the real, the actual serial killer, People no longer had any faith in Eddie Brock. He lost his job. That serial killer was not Cletus Cassidy. And like I mentioned, they kind of reversed it. And now it's an opportunity for him to redeem himself rather than how he ruins it. But it's a neat comic book reference. I mean, ultimately, I still feel like the first one should have had... I mean, I guess, were they implying that that was what happened before the events of the first movie because they talk about that he was like run out of town of was it was it New York anyway now so yeah to to I'm, I'm gonna briefly quote fellow critics the movie is a mess there are maybe three plot threads and none of them are explored well enough plot went by too fast plot is razor thin and basic and you know I I said it in my video on the first movie truth in journalism gets Brock and Venom way better than these two movies and it's just yeah anyway I know we probably are not going to get maximum carnage but I'm just registering my complaint that it's not going to happen because I really love that story. I, I, I did when I read it. I, today I might find that, you know, today I might think it's a little much, but but they do take some stuff from that for this movie. And let's see. Yeah, I, I'll get into what in the spoiler section. So, 
IMDb lists this as an action sci-fi thriller, not horror. Huh. Okay, fair enough. The action can be very exciting. The yeah, the horror thriller aspects can get genuinely scary at times, and the sci-fi is sometimes quite interesting. Now, let's see. Yeah, that brings us to Yeah, I'm just very briefly going to talk about the first Venom movie is a mess, for many reasons. Without Spider-Man, at least at the very start of the story, Venom the Symbiote is much less interesting. The tone is all over the place. PG-13 makes no sense when your titular character literally eats people. Tom Hardy insists on doing weird voices in every movie I see him in. Is it me? Am, am I just... You know, just, just be honest, Tom. Is this... Okay, that's that bit's dying. No, seriously though, what is what is he doing? There were a couple of times in this where the way that he does the Venom voice, he actually sounded a little bit like Bane, the the very yeah. Anyway, th th this movie does do a lot of things that the first one did, and most of them. It's at least more watchable, but I think that does depend on your tolerance for this sort of thing. Like, if if you thought the first movie was a little much, this one is definitely gonna. You're you're either gonna you're gonna roll with it, or the movie's gonna run you over and back up and and run you over again. This is, yeah. Now, the, the title of this movie is a biblical reference. Be, you know, be, basically, Carnage sees himself as a figure, figure of that magnitude. Now, I'm just very briefly going to quote from Wikipedia about the title. The... Yeah, some people said Maximum Carnage would have been a better title, or even just Venom 2. Negative, they negatively compared the official title of this film to films like Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford, Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. But I felt it was a great title, given the first film was surprisingly goofy. The perfect title for a beautifully stupid franchise. The and, and the teasers, Sony proudly showing off the logo of the new film, as if the title isn't completely insane. Now, for those who don't know, I watch and review pretty much every single comic book adaptation movie that goes to theaters. When I read comics, which is pretty much 1999 to 2007, possibly a little before or after that, Carnage was my favorite villain, and one of my favorite characters in general. And there are definitely some really good things about... Th there are some things they get absolutely right. Now, let's see... There was no 3D showing a cinema in the cinema near me, so I cannot comment on the 3D. Now, this was written this was written by you know, Tom Hardy has a story writing credit, and other than him it was written by Kelly Marcel who also wrote the, you know, she, she writes the story and the screenplay for this she wrote the, the story for Cruella. 
She wrote the screenplay for the first Venom. She wrote Saving Mr. Banks. And she wrote the first Fifty Shades movie. I feel like someone at Sony, like there, there was the there was the infamous email leak. I feel like there's a missing email leak where like someone at Sony was like, "Who are we gonna get to write the Venom movie?" And then someone else was like, "Venom? What?" So it's like a movie about snake bites. What? What is? What is this? And he's like, no, 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 he's like, he's Venom, Venom, it's like this character, he's like, he's like black and white. And, you know, then the other one was like, so gray, I know exactly, or, or maybe it was like, the movie isn't black and white, they're all, they're, they're shades of gray. I, that would make sense. But as it is, I'm not sure there is a, an answer to that that makes sense. Because for those who might not remember, Fifty Shades of Grey came out before Venom. We're not talking about like, oh, you know, she wrote Venom, that went well, so she wrote this other movie that she really wanted to. But no, no, no. They knew that she had written Fifty Shades of Grey when they hired her to do Venom. I'm going to move on. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to quote a fellow critic here on the writing because this is this is a really great quote. First the writing feels like it has schizophrenia. It's all over the place. It's like two writers sat in different rooms, came up with two very different movies, and then both were so horrible, they decided to smash both of them together, hoping two negatives would make a positive. It did not work. And I do appreciate, you know, there are some really far out concepts, you know, in both of these movies. And the first one already, like, asked you to accept kind of a lot. But the first movie did also spend some time saying, you know, oh, you know, astronaut crashed to Earth and, oh, they, they encountered a, what was it, a meteor or something? And, like, there were life forms on that and they're you know trying to test like they're they're seeing if the life forms will form symbiosis with human beings and and you know it it tries to to get you know this one adds several new things and it doesn't even try to explain like there are things in this movie that i did not think i would see outside of a comic book and the movie just kind of glosses by, like, a lot of characters don't even, there are, there are times where Eddie will argue with Venom, and, like, we can hear Venom's voice, and he can, but the other characters around Eddie, they can't hear him, so they're just seeing this guy running around, like, apparently arguing with himself and they are surprisingly cool with it and it i mean they can't it's it's a choice i don't know if it's a if it's a good choice but it's certainly a choice they kind of did have to either like restrain themselves on that which you know it's it's one of the things that people really enjoyed about the first one not always you know some some sometimes ironically but Nevertheless, it's it's considered a strength of the first movie. They could either restrain that and thus possibly lose money, or they could just go all out and just, like, like other characters will occasionally be like, what did you just say? And he'll be like, oh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm saying things. I can't. He, at one point, he literally tells a person, I can't explain that. And then he kind of tries... And then they just move on, and it's just like, there are so many movies out there where, like, this would be a thing, where, like, 
you know, other characters wouldn't just let it go, but here it just, they just, they just move on. And, and, and you either roll with it or you get run over and run over, over and over again. Plot twists. Uh, let's see. There are some real baffling ones. There are not too many plot twists. I don't know if is bad the word. They're weird. There are, there are some weird plot twists. There are not too few. Are they too easy to figure? I mean, some of it you know if you saw the trailer, but otherwise, not really. I mean, there's there's like one or two things that you're gonna you are gonna see coming, but. Anyway, this was directed by Andy Serkis. This is the only Andy Serkis movie I have, the, the only of the ones he's directed that I've watched. I mean, I've heard some really good and some really bad things about Mowgli. I think everything I've heard about Breathe was fairly positive, so, yeah. Let's see. You know, basically, yeah, going from Wikipedia, he, he was, yeah, he was hired as director partly due to his experience working with CGI and motion capture technology, which was an important part of portraying Venom and Carnage in the film. Ruben Fleischer, who directed the first one, said he was happy to let Circus take over the franchise following the negative critical reaction that the first film received. I don't understand that. Believing reviewers had unfairly treated the crowd-pleasing movie, potentially due to biases against Sony and towards Marvel Studios' rival superhero films. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely it. Although now I want a video of Circus doing Gollum Smeagol reading positive and negative reviews of this movie. Now, let's see. Quoting fellow critics here, the movie does not have Circus's directorial voice. It was made by a committee. Let's see. Unlike Ruben Fleischer, Circus isn't afraid to take on the weirdness of the situation. Use a lot of the physical comedy and goofiness to tell the story, creating interesting visuals in the process. Sometimes the comedy doesn't always hit, especially when it tries to shield away the horror that Carnage brings to the table. Gotta keep that PG-13 rating. But Circus definitely brings a fun comic book style energy to the film with his quick pacing to giant spot and fist to amuse audiences for the most part. Uh, well, I wish the film had a more serious tone going for it considering who the non villain was. Circus makes sure we're entertained by the stupidity of it all. I'd like to see what he can do with a stronger script. So, the very opening of the movie, we get some backstory on the two villains, and does a pretty decent job of, like, I mean, I'm not sure sympathetic is the word, but you understand them, you know, you can, you can see why the, yeah. why they're doing what they're doing and why they want what they want which i don't think i'm going to give it away before i get into spoilers so i am not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad i will say it fits with what came before i there there are a lot of good things about the ending And it doesn't have to rely on Deus Ex Machina or other convenient writing. Now, so the movie, it has a mid-credits scene. It does not, as far as I know, have a post credit scene. You don't have to stay all the way through the end credits. You know, once you've gotten the one scene, which comes just a few minutes into the end credits 
and I can understand. I, I, I think they might have been like, look, if we're going to make the movie this loud and this fast and this ridiculous, we got to let people leave as soon as it's over. The movie never really lost my interest. I'm not sure I would really say that any parts were more or less enjoyable to watch. Than, like, it's not always the same reason that a scene is enjoyable. Like, sometimes a scene is enjoyable because it's actually good. Often it's enjoyable because it's so ridiculous that you just, yeah. And I, I just got done watching the Cosmonaut review, Cosmonaut Variety Hour quickie review, where he talked about that you're, you know, he was always laughing at the movie, but more frequently at how ridiculous it was, not with the movie, not at the actual jokes. Now, as far as, let's see. This uses Venom's powers, Carnage's powers, and Shriek's powers fairly well. There's there's a lot of screen time for symbiotes in in this, like way way more. You know, the, the, you once again, I rewatched the first movie just yesterday. That movie kind of feels like it's ashamed of like. It's yeah for for a lot of that movie it it kind of feels like the the people making it are ashamed that they they just they just want to get it they just want to get it over and done with and and move on to something more dignified and this one really isn't at all afraid of it. like if you if you watched the first movie and you were like I mean I kind of wanted more venom this is definitely going to deliver that. I, I cannot guarantee that you will necessarily like the movie more overall, but there's definitely more, more symbiote. I, I would say, like, I enjoyed it more. I would say it's, it's a better movie in almost all regards. <laughs> the... I don't know that I would say that it's a good movie, though. So that brings us to the the actors. So Tom Hardy playing both Eddie and Venom. You know, this continues this thing of you know the two of them struggling for control of the body they share and some of it feels like a retread like it almost feels like parts of this movie were just the stuff cut from the first and I'm almost 100% certain that isn't the case but like you have multiple scenes of the two of them arguing over who gets to be in charge and it just kind of feels like this this is the stuff that you know, the first, yeah, you know, you, you, three times I've now watched Venom, and every time I watch it, I, I more, I get even more of an appreciation of how much must be missing from the, yeah. Wait, did I say every two... Right. Venom came out in 2018. I think I'm thinking of Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming, 2017, 2019, and 2021. Right. Yeah. I just, I just realized that, and I had to get it out of my system. So, in the first... Right, so I yeah, I, I noted to go into does Eddie behave Renan perform in a way that makes sense based on what we know or learn about 
Yeah, I would uh, a lot of the time he, he, his actions actually make sense. In the first one, Eddie does stuff no half decent journalist would do. Does he in this too? I mean, I think maybe the possibly some now. Yeah, and and you know the first one was basically a buddy comedy. This one's a romantic comedy, and and I I know you have one or one of two reactions right now. You're like that's another person saying that. How does that make any sense? Or you're like I've never heard anyone say that before, and now I'm wondering if you have some some sort of you know the this this is a movie that makes you feel like your your brain is is melting and about to come running out of your ears. I I I almost always watch movies more than once. It will be a relief when I watch this a second time just to make sure that I didn't imagine this movie. This is this is not a movie to like maybe not so much visually but like the ideas and such do not do acid and then watch this movie unless you're like 100% down for completely freaking out because the this yeah now Eddie and Venom have been roommates for 18 months when this movie starts so there's been some time for issues to rear their ugly heads and yeah, they are definitely having trouble living together. Now, let's see. yeah, Cosmo and Variety Hour point, pointed out in their video on the first one that Eddie behaves like he's drunk the whole movie, and everyone in the movie are bad at their jobs. Yeah, I, I suppose. I'm not sure I would say that's the case here but def definitely check out Cosmo Variety Hour great videos on on this now I read stuff on IMDb and among other places when doing research for these movies and the IMDb frequently asked questions section had someone ask why isn't Topher Grace returning as Venom Some men just want to watch the world burn. You know, originally no one put in an answer, but like a couple of days ago, someone put in he stunk. Now, let's see the that brings up. Yeah, and YMS pointed out about the first movie. You know, he's not really. Um, a villain, he's basically a hero. I mean, he does a thing or two in this that are really messed up. So, that maybe, I, I don't know if it makes it better. Or if it's just, it was always a bad idea. Anyway. <laughs> so, Andy Sorkis uh, said that Eddie is struggling with Venom, who's like a manic toddler while Venom feels trapped in Eddie's body and that that does come across and it's kind of fun not always in the ways that it's supposed to be but it's it is fun now Michelle Williams playing and Anne Wayne so let's see yeah you know like last time we saw her sympathetic to Eddie but not wanting to get back together and she believed that Venom was dead and you know I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna love seeing her in this which I did in the first you know I I really appreciate when you have a character like that and you do not make her like this awful like, there are way too many movies 
where a woman is supposed to like we're supposed to dislike a woman because she's not with the male lead of the movie and it's like just yeah it's frustrating i'll i'll leave it at that and yeah both of these movies have a lot of empathy for her character she doesn't do what you know what eddie wishes she did and maybe sometimes she doesn't you know and not necessarily what the audience maybe wishes she would but you don't get that she she's not just like intentionally hurting him now you know the the Yeah, the, yeah, so, in the first film, as well as both of the Amazing Spider-Man movies, the female love interest of the titular male hero slash anti-hero isn't just a damsel in distress, like was always the case in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. Like, there's a, there's actually a story, I, I forget, I want to say it was like maybe the commentary track or something. That like Kirsten Dunst, she was so relieved when when she you know she read the script for the third one. She, I think she even thanked the screenwriter. Thank you for not making me, you know, for not having me in the in the finale screaming and needing Spider Man to save me. And it was like you know, I mean, we have to get there eventually. And then like some days later, he he, you know, he came up like, I am so sorry. They made me, they said, you know, originally, Spider-Man 3, that was supposed to be Gwen Stacy there at the end. That's why she disappears out of the movie. She wasn't supposed to disappear out of the movie. She was supposed to be captured and threatened there. But, you know, the studio felt it should be Mary Jane. Moving on. So yeah, she isn't just a damsel in distress, she tries to protect herself and get out of danger if she finds herself in a bad situation. She doesn't run away from it if she's in a position to help the titular character, which she will likely do at least once in a major way in each film. And she's important to the plot. I mean, yeah, it's, for me to comment on how that relates to this movie, I have to... Spoilers for this movie. So... She is a damsel for, for some of it, sadly. But she does also really matter. She's not just there to be threatened. And yeah, she like she makes she she's some of what she did uh, yeah, some of what she does is extremely important. No more spoilers for the time being. And last thing I will say on Michelle Williams. She was one of the best parts of this movie. This entire movie. She, 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 yeah. Her performance, especially in like two specific scenes. I mean, I, I feel like they, they like the, you know, the the filmmakers looked at the first movie and were like. She looks like she doesn't want to be in this movie. Maybe if we gave her something fun to do instead. Inst yeah, let's let's try that. Let's see if she will sink her teeth into and just just dive head first. Like this is I'm not going to go as far as saying that you should pay full price movie ticket price to watch the movie at least once on a on a big screen just for the performance of Michelle Williams but if you couple it with the actress who plays Mrs. Chen and yeah I mean really you know Tom Hardy yet again Woody Harrelson and Naomi Harris yeah old if you put them all together, that that is worth the the price of admission. Yes. 
So Naomi Harris plays Francis Bergen slash Shriek, Cassidy's love interest. And Circus described as a damaged soul who has been living in isolation and has a dark side to her. Now, I haven't actually watched that many movies that she's in. Like, other than this, Ninja Assassin, Street Kings, Miami Vice, and 28 Days Later. But I really love her in... Yeah, all of these movies, really. And, you know, when I heard that they cast Selena from 28 Days Later, I was like, okay, yeah, she's she can be intense and scary, so that's going to be really cool. Now... Yeah, you know, she, she has the ability to, to emit powerful high-pitched sonic screeches, which is actually one of Venom's main weaknesses. So, you know, that, yeah, that's, that's a, you know, and other than that, no, we are yet again, like, like with the first one, Venom fights a, you know, a, a stronger, faster, more powerful symbiote so that's a little you know i i really we probably are getting venom free unless this movie just absolutely dies at the box office we're probably going to get at least one more venom movie and yeah i really hope that they come up with something other than i get it i get it obvious i i don't who doesn't want to see carnage like if you if you are familiar at all with the character, of course you want to see a proper adaptation of it. And Woody Harrelson is a great idea to to play. But if you had Carnage in the first movie, he would have stolen the movie entirely from Venom. And for some reason, they felt that they had to deliver an origin sort like Venom's origins. You don't need to do that much. I th I think they could have had Carnage in the first movie. But, yes, he would have stolen, like, people would have walked out, wow, Carnage, that sure was a great movie, just, like, the only, the only way you can still care about Venom is if Carnage isn't there yet, you know, the, the, meanwhile, of course, they, you know, if, if the first one didn't have two symbiotes fighting each other, it'd be like, it's not, you know, I mean, if you're at all familiar with the comics, it's not as though there are, you know, sim symbiotes aren't that rare. If, if you, yeah, once you, once you go into the realm of the symbiotes, there's a lot of them, you know, so, I mean, you know, we're, we're not talking about some, some kind of thing where there's like, you know, there's there's only only one, yeah. Now, in the comic, when Cassidy's killing his way out of the facility he's in, Shriek cheers him on from a cell, so he frees her, and they go on a mass murder spree rampage together, which works fine for the comic, which is also a much longer story than this movie. In this film, the two of them were in love years before the events of the movie. They were separated in different facilities, which works really well to make their relationship have more weight. I, you know, sadly, they don't really go anywhere from that, and it is just... But, but no, it, it worked a lot better than... Yeah. Now... And yeah, we you know we of course have homage to nineteen ninety four's Natural Born Killers, with Harrelson going on a uh, you know playing a character where he's going on a serial killing spree, with um, yeah, quoting a fellow critic here: "We know Cletus and Francis love each other through flashbacks and exposition, but we barely get to see the two of them 
together in the present to really care about their relationship. Now. The main issue with Venom 2 is it's way too short for what it tries to accomplish. Unlike most sequels, the film may be better, but it's not bigger since it's about 10 minutes shorter than the first film. And when you're introducing new characters while continuing established stories, you're going to need a bit more time to connect it all. I actually, I've, I've been reading a lot of different numbers for, like some people say, oh, the movie's like 97 minutes if you, you know, if you don't count the end credits. I'm almost 100% certain it's actually like 88 minutes if you don't count the end credits. That's, that's, that was my count by, you know, I tried to write down what time it was when the movie started and when it ended. Yeah. And that actually is like, I think, wait, yeah, the first one was like 97 minutes if you didn't count the end credits, I think. I, I wrote it down in my notes. I'll, I'll get to it a little later, but anyway. So, let's see them. Yeah, so Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy slash Carnage. A psychotic serial killer who becomes the host of another symbiote, Carnage. While in prison, Cassidy refuses to talk with anyone besides Brock, who he considers to be a kindred spirit. And yeah, Cassidy looks different compared to his appearance in the mid-credits scenes of uh, that scene of the first film, which Thir Circus said indicates the passage of time between the two films and let's see yeah you know basically carnage the reason Carnage wasn't in the first film was that he would steal the movie from Venom. You know, similar to how the Joker wasn't in Batman Begins, Lex Luthor wasn't in Man of Steel. And... I mean... I suppose, ultimately... The scenes featuring Cassidy and Carnage are often some of the most entertaining ones. I mean, it maybe also, it would help if, like, a lot of the Venom scenes, a lot of the scenes with Eddie and Venom, they're, they're bickering, like an old married couple, and I don't, I don't know who, who in the Venom fan base wants that. I, I can't, I don't know why they don't just, like, in this one, there's, there's a good, there's a, there's a ton of screen time for Venom, but a lot of the time, he's not really doing anything all that interesting, and, yeah, I, I, I really hope that the, the next time we see Venom, that they're going to try to balance it more out, that that it's not just, yeah. So, let's see. Right, and they also felt that, you know, putting Cassidy in the post credit scene, that, you know, ah, what's the word? That tells us, you know, that's, it's a promise of where they're going to go next. 
and you know today these kinds of movies they they have you know it's it's they don't just do the one movie and then say you know I hope I hope we delivered on that one there's always the promise of the next thing and it does make a lot of sense to you know set up venom and then tease that next time we're getting carnage now the the character of, you know yeah Cleves Cassidy and Carnage char characters were created in the 90s when a lot of regular people were obsessed with serial killers this was also when natural born killers and many many other films about serial killers came out it makes sense that he makes his feature film live action debut now since everyone is still obsessed with serial killers now explored via podcasts tv and streaming shows and various games and and you know don't get me wrong i i, I get it it's you know I, th I think it was the the take who recently did a video where they talked about well you know a lot of women you know consume a lot of this this media about serial killers because they're basically trying to learn how to avoid becoming a victim of yeah now let's see so so yeah the I I listened to this the, there's this YouTube video talking about the origins of Carnage and he said that in the comic early on like Cletus was a mystery nobody who knows the background of Cletus or Carnage you know dares talk to Spider-Man about it they're they're worried that they're gonna get killed by Cletus in the movie we know a lot about his you know yeah we we find out about his background very early on and i think that works i don't think it would have been very satisfying if for a lot of the movie like you know uh yeah i mean it's not a it's not a if i mention any specific movies i'm kind of spoiling okay Brief spoilers for Seven, the David Fincher movie. In that movie, you know, you don't know that much about John Doe, and you never really do find out very much. This movie does not try to do that with Cletus Cassidy. And let's see. Spoilers for Zodiac. You know, that movie, you, you really don't get to know very much about the, the the killer and why he's doing it and all that. And, yeah, this movie does not try to do that. No more spoilers for the time being. Now, let's see. Right, Peggy Lou is the actress who plays Mrs. Chen. <sighs> Do you know that thing where you have like a thought and you feel like that's too stupid, but at the same time you, you feel like you just gotta, you gotta put it out. I would watch an ongoing series focusing on Mrs. Chen. Just I don't even mean like, oh, she goes on adventures. I mean, she stands there in her, in, in the, in the convenience store and like other characters walk in, something happens, they walk back out. She's, she's really, really funny and, and just, yeah, it, engaging. I, I, I would watch that. I hope that they bring her back the, the next time. Anyway. So let's see, that brings us to Right, I noted that I hope that the movie would basically do the Silence of the Lambs dynamic with 
Aedes Cleary Starling, Venom's Hannibal Lecter, and Carnage as Buffalo Bill. And I mean, there is a there is some of that. Now, my only problem with casting of Woody Harrelson is that he is a little too old to like the first time we see Cleves Cassidy, he should be like seventeen years old or maybe in his twenties, but definitely not you know, but and and I, I do think like it would have been ridiculous if they just tried to like de age him for all of his scenes and they, they don't. I as far as I can tell he looks the way he looks in, in real I don't know, maybe they took some years off, but they definitely didn't take that many years off. But you know. Now he's he's incredibly talented. Now Yeah, so, yeah. The post credit scene of the first Venom has Eddie as a journalist going in to see Woody Harrelson being a serial killer. So that's very clearly invoking natural born killers. Spoilers for natural born killers. Do not, like, if you haven't watched that movie, if you have any interest in it at all, skip ahead. Don't let me spoil that movie for you. In fact, that movie honestly delivers a lot of what like obviously not the the symbiote stuff but otherwise it delivers a lot of what you would want from this movie anyway so the yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna say it for those who i'm i'm trusting you that you didn't you're not watching this without having watched that movie un unless you just don't if if you're certain you'll never watch the movie anyway i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna walk through it so, for, for those who might have forgotten, Natural Born Killers ends with Woody Harrelson, you know, Woody Harrelson plays the serial killer throughout the entire movie. The very ending has a reporter, they're played by Robert Downey Jr., so, you know, a different Marvel actor coming in to interview him and Woody Harrelson's character manages to outmaneuver the guards in the prison and break out of prison, ultimately killing the reporter. Now, I'm not going to give away whether or not, you know, this movie kills off Eddie Brock, but, you know, obviously that's not, we, we don't expect it to go that far, but it is an excellent nod to have just, yeah, and, and, Yeah, that's what I'll... Okay, so. No more spoilers for the time being. And, you know, in, in the comic, Eddie is in a cell with Cletus Cassidy, and that's how it happened. And, you know, the... the yeah, in, in this, it's that Cletus, you know, asks them to, to get... Asks the guards to get... Eddie there and then they talk and I'm not going to give away exactly how it ends up with you know symbiote but yeah you know at least one of the trailers it looks like Carnage is writing his letters from himself in his own blood use a pen Cletus K and yeah so in the first movie I like that both Anne and Dan you know, yeah. Anne and Dr. Dan, Anne's new man, they help Eddie, and yeah, that is still the case. And let's see, the. Yeah, that brings us to the. The cinematography, which was handled by DP Robert Richardson, and I am, I'm just very briefly going to mention other stuff. You know, he and Circus both worked on Breathe, and other than that, he was DP on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, The Hateful Eight, Django Unchained, Shutter Island, Inglorious Bastards, 
Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2, U-Turn, Nixon, Casino, Natural Born Killers, A Few Good Men, JFK, Born on the Fourth of July, and Platoon. So Tarantino, Scorsese, and Stone all like working with him, and he helped make some of their most well-shot films. And... Yeah, so I'm going to quote fellow critics here. Andy Serkis and Richardson go hard on the urban gothic imagery. This is a comic book movie that actually looks like a comic book with wild angles and a whirling camera that recalls Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. So, the movie does, right, so, uh, let's see, is it easy to follow when something suddenly happens, like action scenes? Uh, it's a bit mixed on that, sometimes, yeah, yeah, sometimes, but sometimes not. Now, the movie is edited by Marion Brandon who is also editing Thor Love and Thunder. She edited Rise of Skywalker. She edited Venom, Passengers, The Force Awakens, Star Trek Into Darkness, Super 8, Star Trek Mission Impossible 3, and 27 episodes of Alias. I, I think she did a pretty decent job like it's you know like with the first one it feels like they they removed a bunch of stuff that they couldn't make work but the now oh right it's hampered by some weird technical choices, like dubbing in Harrelson and Harris over the voices of younger actors playing them as teens. Are we supposed to think a 17-year-old sounds like a 60-year-old Harrelson? Voices change over time. Audiences will track who these characters are. I mean, for sure, the, the movie's in too much of a hurry. And that is obviously, in part, an editing issue. Now. It's strange that Tom Hardy has a shared story credit with Fifty Shades of Grey screenwriter Kevin Marcel who also nets full screenplay credit for this, Lord help her. Now... That... There's a little bit of animation in this movie, of, of, of 2D. 2D? I guess some, some 2D, some 3D. It's used fairly well. And, you know, the, they, they, they get a good balance between it like looking like it's not supposed to be like photorealistic it's supposed to be stylized and it yeah they 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 have something that it's easy to tell what you're looking at but it also like it's it makes a strong impression 
the special effects, like some of it is really, really good. Some of the CG is is very, very convincing. You know, the the both of these movies have seen have have at least one scene each, where like it, you know, if if you if you imagine that this this is Eddie Brock's head, then you know Venom like comes uh, let's see, yeah pops out of part of him and and like the head is in front of eddie's head that happens at least once in both movies and it is so much more convincing when it happens in this movie than in in the first one now some really good stunt work and the production design is quite good like the 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 prison for example and the the what's it called ah i forget what the the kind of place is called but the specific place is called ravencroft and it's basically you know it's where they put supervillains in in the spider-man universe and We've seen it before, you know, this is not the first time we see Rain Ravencroft. We saw it in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And I don't know that I would say, I'm not sure it looks better this time. It, it looks great both, but, like, you're gonna remember it. Like, there's a... Uh, 3% of the people who watch this movie are going to have nightmares where they're suddenly... You know, they, they wake up and they're in Ravencroft or something. You know, it is it is nightmarish. It is horrifying. And they really capture that. Now. There is some more action in this than there was in the first. And... Almost all of it is better. You know, there's still some issues with, like, I don't know why they insist, like, we pay to see these things fight. You know, we want to be able to see them. And yet they, they, the lighting is, is way too dim. You know, it's not, it doesn't make these characters look that much less ridiculous. You might as well light them, you know. Don't, don't, you cannot escape your shame. You might as well light it so that we can get a good look at it. But the, the, yeah. The, the action scenes are largely a lot better in this. Now. And, you know, Woody Harrelson is a much more compelling villain than Riz Ahmed and I do like Riz I, th I think he does a really good job like he he makes that part way better than the the written yeah and you know I haven't seen him in much but he's also really great in Nightcrawler and Centurion So the, the music was handled by Marco Beltrami, who's done a lot of movies that have similarities to this one. I didn't, I, I can't, I'm not good at talking about the music of a movie after having only watched it once, but near the end, you know, there, there were some scenes where like symbiotes were fighting each other and there was like, hard rock heavy metal kind of stuff with like electric guitar and and such and it just that that is the soundtrack of symbiotes you know i i forget exactly who it was some some youtuber pointed out that you know the the
yeah, the the music of of for for these characters is like heavy metal. That is the kind of music that makes the most sense. So let's see them. Yeah, right. The I I I copied in some notes I took a while back from the trailer. Yeah, from when they released the full trailer. And yeah, I wrote some parts of it definitely look good, but it does look like this movie will be a sequel in the same vein as Deadpool 2, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Zombieland 2. You love the first one, so we're just going to do a slightly bigger and faster version of the same stuff, reference every single thing you liked in the first one. And to be fair, I do love all those movies, all three originals, all three sequels. But this trailer definitely shows them delving into the absurdist comedy, the weirdness, Venom talking about eating people, Venom editing, sh editing sharing a body. I mean, although critics hated it, audiences loved it. It's got an incredible audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, so they figured they'll go harder on it. This got rid of the terrible wig. Cass's hair looks much better now. I do wish they hadn't turned, toned down the red of Carnage quite as much as they did, but I get it. And we watched the movie guys pointed out that the start of the trailer with the making breakfast felt like something out of Men in Black. And yeah, that is it for the. Yeah, so, you know, the, f the first one, there's some build-up before we saw Eddie in full Venom form. And, you know, in this one, like, one of the first times we see him as Venom is extremely early in this movie. I, could, I can't... St I mean, if I had to guess, maybe five or ten minutes in is the first time. Some people counted it as this movie being 83 minutes. Now, yeah, see, the first one, I, once again, watched it just yesterday, and I was very careful to notice, okay, when do the end credits start rolling? The end credits for the first movie start rolling after an hour and 28 and a half minutes, and that's about the same as this one. They might be two or three minutes off but that's it so you know the the i don't like i don't mean for this to be insulting but i think the people who think that there are huge differences between the the running times you know either they they count you know maybe they count end credits maybe they haven't watched the first one in a while i can understand like i the first movie, it feels longer than it is. You know, it, it feel I would I would have guessed that it was fifteen minutes longer than that. Uh, you know. And this movie feels even shorter than yeah. This movie feels much, much shorter than the first one. Like when when the end credits started rolling, I felt like I, I just sat down five minutes ago, you know, so I, I don't blame anyone for making a mistake, but no, the the movies really are not in in length. They're they're very very close. It's just that the end credits run for much longer for the first one than for this, as as far as I know, for than they do for this one. But I didn't sit through all the credits because I heard that there wasn't to. So let's see the the. The best element of this movie, it's it's difficult to pick just one. The the 
I already mentioned, you know, if, if you can if you can enjoy this movie, you don't have to enjoy it unironically. You can enjoy it ironically, but and I, I don't I don't blame anyone for not being able to. I've I've seen movies that other people love and I was like, what what about that is you know what do you love about that? I don't understand. But if this like I've, this is a movie, if if you have a choice on whether or not to watch it, if you think it's going to bother you, I would maybe suggest just skipping it, because it's gonna, it is going to just destroy you, it, it will, it will keep you awake at night, it will, you will, you will have such trouble thinking about anything else, because of how weird it is, and how just all these creative decisions but if you if you think you can just roll with it, you you can really enjoy yourself a lot. It's it's like a ah, it's it's like a sugar rush, you know. It's just it's it's you, just, yeah. But yeah, the 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 fun you can have with the movie is is one of the best. The the. Yeah, seeing Cletus, seeing Carnage. And the, the, yeah, Michelle Williams and Mrs. Chen. Now, let's see. The worst aspect is the, the, yeah, yeah, let's see. I guess the first one was kind of an accident. Like they they were trying to make this movie, they were trying to figure out how to make it work. And you know, one day Tom Hardy got the weird idea to jump into a fish tank. And so they filmed that and they were like, "This this is actually kind of I don't know, it kind of works. I feel like okay, let's let's roll with it." And this movie tries to recreate that, like, in that movie it was organic. It was bad, but it was organic. Here, it's it's very astroturf, like, they really try to, and, and the fact that they are, like, on board with it. Like, if the first movie, if you've ever played one of the Grand Theft Auto games, you know, you, you can't do it in, like, the very first one. I don't know about the second one. I think from the third one, and at least several games on, I haven't played all of them, if you are very quick, you can grab, you know, you can carjack someone where there's someone on the back seat, and you can, if you drive really fast, they are not going to get out of the seat. If you, if you start to slow down, especially if you actually stop, they might, you know, a lot of these passengers will, like, open the door, run out, and, and, you know, and, you know, you, it it can be fun. It can be fun to go on a joyride with someone sitting back there. You know, the first movie, watching the first movie, was like being the passenger in the car there. Watching this movie, you know, it's it's kind of like I mean, yeah, the the car's moving faster. It's crashing into way more stuff. The the it's way louder. It's way more ridiculous, but. You know, for, for one thing, you kind of knew, you know, we knew what we were getting this time because it was what we got the first time and the trailers confirmed that we're getting more of it. And then you have the, yeah, like the fact that it was planned, that they, they tried to, you know, you can't, you can't really recreate an accident you can you can just imitate it and that's never going to be the same now let's see and i do think that it is it is an issue for this movie i i i don't know if they're ever gonna make a good i, I mean sony i don't i know i'm not sure i think sony can make a good venom movie even if they just like, you know, went back to formula, which they did. I mean, it's I already mentioned. Venom without, look, the first movie 
with Venom doesn't have to focus a lot on Spider-Man. But for the first movie with Venom to go past Spider-Man, because that is what the first Venom movie did, you know, they, they could have kept it vague. I forget who it was that, there was some YouTuber that suggested they, they could have just kept it vague, you know, but no, we know that the first human being that the symbiote that ends up going by the name of Venom bonded with successfully without killing them quickly was Eddie Brock. And that makes him, that makes both of those characters significantly less interesting than if Spider-Man was, in, you know, you can just have him like, anyway, I, I definitely think they would have to go back and start over, which, you know, it doesn't look like that. They only will if if they feel forced to, but I do think it is possible to make a good Venom movie, but I don't think Sony can. If if they end up giving the rights to, if they sell the rights to, to Disney so the MCU could have, then anyway. And let's see. Now, yeah, so what I was most worried about for the movie was more of the, the tonal dissonance. And, I mean, really... At least this time it knows what it is. It's not trying to figure out, so that isn't as big of a... Yeah, it, it did fine on that front. Now, the thing I was most looking forward to was seeing Carnage on the big screen, and that was very, very satisfying. You know, he should have had more screen time, but I, I get why it ended up the way it did. You know, if, if you're like, oh, you know, been, if, if you, like me, have been wanting to, like, so let's see, what is, I guess, 20 years? 20 years, yeah. If you have been wanting to see Carnage on the big screen in 20 years or more you know obviously keep in mind he does not have that you know he has less screen time than you might hope for but seeing him yeah it's like it's incredible seeing him you know <laughs> throwing around his victims and like the the you know, forming all these tentacles and, and the, yeah. I, for, for some people, it, just seeing Carnage in the flesh, so to speak, will be enough. You know, that will be worth the price of admission. The trailers give too much away, but they do also give you a good idea of what the movie is like. And, you know, if, if you like the trailer, you're more likely to like the movie than if you do not like the trailer. Cover and poster do not give too much away, and they do also give a pretty decent idea of what the movie is like. If you like the poster, you're more likely to like the movie than if you do not. And... Last I checked, which was some hours ago, this was fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. It had a 61% based on 191 reviews and 84% audience score based on over 5,000 verified ratings. Let's see, that is the... So of the 191, 116 of them gave it a fresh rating and... Yeah, you know, it was, let's see, on the 11th, it was rotten, but it's been fresh, you know, yeah, the, the 12th, the 13th, and today, the 14th, so. And on Metacritic, when I last checked, it was at 48 out of 100, and 6.4 out of 10 for users. And on IMDb, it was, it has 6.5 out of 10. 
with 429 IMDb user reviews, 108 external reviews. Now, let's see, so 22.4% rated it a 7, 18.4 rated it a 6. Yeah, so, yeah, this is not capital C cinema, but, it, you know, it is cinematic junk food, and, So I, I saw some people say, you know, oh, the movie doesn't have a new Eminem song specific to the, film, the way that the first one did. Actually, it does. And there is also a remix of the one for the first film. And they're, they're both great. So that's cool. No Spider-Verse tease mid-credits, of course, since, you know, they're not... I mean, we are supposed supposedly getting the sequel next year, but they're not quite close enough to being done that they have, you know, yeah. And that pretty much is, let's see, I'm going to scroll through, see if there's anything. Now, something I completely forgot, but you know, again, I just re yesterday I rewatched the first movie. The first movie robs us of seeing Symbiote Dog and Symbiote Rabbit, and at the very end of the first movie, it has not at all been addressed that the Life Foundation has a rabbit which is fully bonded with the symbiote, like hypothetically. This thing is just as dangerous as Venom is, you know, or Riot or the others. Because it they didn't take, like, part of it and put it... No, the whole thing is in that rabbit, which also really makes you... Well, isn't it... Doesn't it need a larger host to live? I, I don't think they were really thinking about these things. It's, they just... Like, they kind of needed... You know, they were like, well, no one's gonna... No one's gonna just start smushing humans and symbiotes together we gotta be okay uh animal trials first i guess you know just yeah because okay so yeah this guy's like a sociopath he's flying around space looking for for new real estate you know he, he just wants to find a place that he can move to because he knows the planet is screwed and he doesn't really care about the rest of us but he's not going to start smushing symbiotes and and humans together without doing animal tests. No, no, no. We're going to we're going to have a rabbit have symbiosis with one of the Clintar I just and the movie doesn't address it. Like all you needed was just like this brief little bit where like I mean, I don't know. I guess most, uh, I mean, I guess if they watch it, if they know what they're dealing with, you know, just, just don't like accidentally let it out. But it's just, I mean, is, is there even a single person alive working at the Life Foundation by the end of the first movie? So it's like, you know, if, they, if, if someone else buys this place, are they going to know not to, yeah, you know, I mean, if if they see a, a a bunny and they, you know, are they gonna? Did did someone take careful notes to make sure? You know, like, I mean, I I get that the okay, it's a lab. They're not gonna like just set you know release the the rabbit into the wild completely carelessly. But you do gotta be careful about symbiotes. Now, 
the bad guy is extremely repetitive in the first one. He's basically always saying some variation of the following. This, insert science thing, is incredible. You have to get me my symbiote back, repeating orders that haven't yet been followed, or even sometimes ones that are being followed, and occasionally making vaguely threatening statements. And Cletus is much better on that front. He's nowhere near as... Yeah. Like, seriously, sit down and actually watch and listen to every word that Riz Ahmed's character says. And, and it's like, were they... Did they have to write a certain amount of lines for him and they just couldn't come up with something good? Is that what happened? Because, like... It's 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 wild. It really is. Like if if you if you watch the first Venom movie and you're like, I mean, there was something wrong, but I can't quite put my finger on it. That's one of them. That's definitely one of them. I think this might be the first Sony produced movie related to Spider Man that doesn't have even a single instance of science somehow giving superpowers to someone, whether they are investigating and happen to get powers. You know, side note, characters in Sony Bruce Spider-Man related movies seriously need to stop trying to input codes in tech code pads. It does not lead to good things. You know, you have the amazing Spider-Man where, you know, he imitates the, the, the code, gets in, gets bitten by, you know, I mean, there's the one spider that, but he, he gets like a dozen spiders on him. So anyway, and then in Venom 1 where he's, you know. And he's like, I, I don't know how to get you, you know, he wants to get the, the poor homeless woman out of there. I don't know what, to, you know, he just starts pressing the thing and it's just like, I mean, they felt, they probably felt like they had to give him something. You know, he, he would look, you know, he, you can't have him just be passive, so you have to give him something. Anyway. Let's see. But yeah, you know. One way or another, they accidentally find themselves in a place that gets them powers. Sometimes they're irresponsible scientists testing some science on themselves. And, you know, this, yeah, so this, the following is just an MST3K that I noted while watching the first one. You know, Anne is, you know, on the phone, lady. Eddie, I really need to see you. No. You cannot see me. What, did you turn yourself invisible? No, that's another crappy non-MCU Marvel adaptation. And... You know, honestly, Tom Hardy's physical comedy is a one-man show. A sort of one-man Laurel and... Well, Hardy. And... Yeah, so... Who do I recommend this movie to? If you really love the first one, if the idea of seeing Carnage and Shriek and some aspects of Maximum Carnage, you know, if, if that's enough that you can, you know, not listen too much to the, the critical, you know, yeah. Because it's still, it's got some, it's got some, Choices, some some interesting choices, but but no, it's not like it's not unwatchable or anything. I suppose ultimately this gets seven interesting choices that they run with out of ten. And that brings us to the thoughts sections, starting with annotations. Did I say annot disclaimers? Wow, my, I was joking when I said my brain melted. I thought I was joking when I said, anyway.
Disclaimers. If you don't care about these disclaimers or trying to keep them short and relevant, but your mileage may vary, you can skip right ahead to the section of your choice via the description box. I often try to talk very fast during the disclaimers. Since a lot of this is very standard information, I might be keep speaking as fast as I sometimes do during this section. Once I get into the rest of the video itself, with that said, please note that some of the specific discussion of the movie may be in this section. So, one more time, this contains spoilers, including for the first movie and the comics and, you know, other Spider-Man movies. Now, I do think this, you know, as a sequel, I appreciate that they are in so much more, like, the movie wants to do more with with these, you know, if, if this had been the first movie they'd made, it might have come out way more similar to the first one, but with this one, it's like, okay, people want... They they liked the the weird stuff, but they wanted more of the symbiotes, so more symbiotes. The rest of this video is not a review. It's a series of, well, thoughts. Some is analysis, some is MST3K, MST3K riff tracks, and other jokes. Especially, uh, let's, yeah, and the time codes for other sections are in the description box. The section right after this one. It's the th thoughts that I had while watching in chronological order. You can think of it as a running commentary like tweeting would like. The section after that is thoughts I had before watching. And... Right, so this is where I get into does the movie appear to have empathy for the least likable character? So, Cletus Car Carnage and Shriek would easily be the least... Yeah. You know, the, the um, Cletus, there's some, there's a little bit of, although, I mean, Venom bites his head off after he says, you know, yeah, I, I, I guess the movie's kind of trying to have it both ways, but, but yeah, for sure, like, Francis, the, the, you know, her getting, Threatened by Carnage. I I think the movie does a decent job of, you know, not getting. Yeah, the fact that it's um. I, I I appreciate that the movie ends with the the that that you know it doesn't try to say that it is possible to redeem Cletus Carnage or Shriek. Now I think the movie does a good job of not showing so much of Carnage that we become used to him, adjusted to seeing him. You know, I, I enjoyed every time I saw Carnage, and it never felt... I, I was never sitting there being like, okay, let's move on, let's... What what else you got, movie? Come on, there's got to be something else. And it also didn't feel insubstantial. It, it didn't feel like too little. It didn't feel like it was just nothing. That brings us... To the next section. Notes taken while watching. In at least one trailer or review or something, I've seen a clip where, you know, Cletus and Shriek busting out some moves, really enjoying having set fire to, you know, the building where they were raised. You know, the... the the, the kind of place where they put you if you're a child and you don't have parents. And, you know, yeah, clearly both of them are having a great time there. You know what they say, if you want a romantic date, nothing beats an orphanage lit evening dancing under the stars. And... Let's see... 
yeah, the first note I made was that the opening has this really creepy music. Very effective, very serial killer. And we see that Shriek is taken, and I love how fake the license plate on the the transport the, the like it just said like I did I did I lost count, but like I think there were maybe four nines in the I I mean okay I guess hypothetically some car somewhere maybe does have that I I don't know exactly how they choose. It it just it was it was wonderfully fake. I I feel like that kind of thing. It it wasn't even on screen for very many, for for more than like a second or two. It's like either just use CG to to fix it or just get a license plate that isn't quite as fake. And let's see. Right. The the yeah. They talk about that. Oh, you know, the mutation is. The, it's like mute. You're saying she's a mutant. You're saying that, and she's in the comics, so it's not like they, they. It's not like just out of thin, you know. But there are other things about these characters that that are like, you can't have Spider Man, but you can name drop mutants and talk like she just says. They say the mutation is movies. It's just like it's a what like they say. The mutation is is advancing too fast. The way that they would say, "Ah, this coffee is too hot." Like it's a, it's like it's just you know mutants, mutations, mutant powers, which just and and she's like, "Oh, they're sending me to a, a place with others uh, like me or something like that," and I'm like, "Is she getting sent?" to Xavier's School for the Gifted Youngsters or is she gonna end up in the hospital from New Mutants cuz this is yeah and I I like the detail that when the you know when you have to go in and like at, at first I thought they were oh they're gonna like feed her no they they they, they shove in a newspaper but they put in like these noise canceling headphones and and such and, and like at first it's like oh you know they they want to they want to rub in that you know oh the that guy you love he, you know he's he's due to be executed pretty soon and they they just want to torment her basically when that happened once i was sitting there like ah oh, man they're they're really awful they're they're really sadistic and then it happened like five more times or something. Like they kept going back and forth. like, okay, so so first there's just that, and then Cletus has Eddie print something that's a coded message for her, and then she gets that, and then she gets the the that other one. It like it keeps over and over, and it's like. I mean, okay, so I understand the reason it's actually happening in the movie is because if not for her getting these newspaper messages, then there just isn't, like, you know, that then she's just stuck in her cell for a really long time, and then she suddenly gets freed, but instead there's this emotional journey kind of thing, you know. One of the times the doctor just goes up there and is like, you know, presses the thing. It's like, I don't actually know where Cletus is, but apparently he, you know, people don't know where he is. Does that bug you? Does that bug you? Should I, should I say something else? You know, and it's just like, I was sitting there like, okay, so I know that he's escaped. But even so, like, why would you? Does she just have like a policy? I I want to torment my patients. But I'm not gonna lie to them, so I'm not I'm not gonna go and tell her that they captured Cletus again. No, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna say to her that he's on the loose. Which I mean, does does she just? You know what? Maybe she's not 
Maybe it's not that she's devoted to tormenting Francis. Maybe she's just... Maybe maybe part of her job description is is to I, I I forget what they're called but like how you'll like online you'll get messages every time there's an update to a story like that's you know she's just up uh, an update to the story of Cletus I gotta go talk to Francis just if if when it happened once it it was effective when it ha kept happening it was like oh come on man what are you just yeah. And let's see. So Eddie and Venom argue in a in a bathroom in a, in a in a stall and there's there's another there's a there's a person right in the next stall trying to, you know, she, she like looks under like what is going on in there and just, yeah. Wow. And Venom does some detective work and it's like, it's, it's, it is wild the the th like they needed something specific for the two of them to break up over and i get it like <laughs> venom is stuck inside this other guy's body and he really applies himself you know he does this detective work it works it leads to them discovering all these bodies and then he gets no credit, like Eddie gets all of the credit. I've been there, okay, not literally, but no, I, I get it. I get why that is, but it's still pretty ridiculous. And and it's like, you know, oh, he draws all these things. And I, oh, it's just like these, you know, and then you think, oh, we're going to get a scene of them, like, finding, oh, no, we're just going to get this brief, like, did they spend maybe 30 seconds on just this quick, like we we see that you know oh the they there's a body there's a body there's a body there's a body, and then it goes to Cletus and he's like infuriated and I just watched the pitch meeting and it's like so Cletus is angry with Eddie for printing the story that he told Eddie to print and I can't figure it out either I don't what is he angry about like if he didn't want for the the Okay, so he didn't expect the bodies to be found. But why did he ask a reporter to come? Like, it's not like, you know, he, he tripped and fell and suddenly there's a reporter. And he specifically asked for a reporter, an investigative reporter. What did he think was going to happen? I, I will say, like, you know, in, in the... When when the trailer came out and there were these brief shots of you know you could pick up he had drawn you know Cletus drew something on the wall and he wrote something on the wall and there were people who were going going to like detail analyzing every single little thing in the movie it actually does matter what was written on you know we don't spend forever dissecting it but you know it, it it's not just there as like background and the it was it was kind of fun seeing like I, f I forget if it was like this or like this but you know Eddie Venom uses Eddie's body to really quickly draw all these things and then type in and and yeah yeah I noted that the movie is rush really rushing through the the plot the Let's see. And yeah, Venom says he doesn't think that chickens have brains. And I like the, you know, Eddie notes that the FBI are looking into 
Venom and, you know, Eddie is on the suspect list. Like, if if they are not extremely careful, they will get caught. And that was also a thing. Like, okay, so the first movie, ultimately, other than that, you know, there's the bit with the, the SWAT team and the Life Foundation, which, like, the Life Foundation, largely, almost everybody involved died. So, not a lot of witnesses. But at the end of the day, like, the... Let's see, the, the, um, yeah, I, I, you know, he wouldn't have been able to get to, is to, to avoid being noticed by someone, you know, someone placed him there. But yeah, the, the SWAT team, you know, that's the thing, like, okay, if, if Venom is R-rated, and he goes around killing people, then it's difficult to, you know, I mean, they, they, it might be really difficult to figure out exactly what happened, but apparently Venom didn't kill any of those SWAT people, which is good, because they're SWAT, they, they're just doing their job, you know, they, they walk into this, like, they're like, this guy's breaking into the, you know, I, I don't know why an entire SWAT team should, Wait, was that after? Had he done anything? He ran up the the building. Maybe that set off some alarms or something. Anyway, you know, I'm glad he didn't kill any of them. But since he didn't kill any of them, like, yeah, every single one of them could say, "Oh yeah, I definitely saw this big black oily dude." That just yeah. But that, that is, and, and, you know, at the end of this movie, they're on the run, and they get some, they get Venom's toes in sand. And, and Eddie apologizes that he can't get wind in, in Venom's non-existing hair, and just, yeah. If you don't think that this movie is a romantic comedy, the lines, I need to be free, I need the, I need, what was it, sand, sand between my toes, sand beneath my feet, something like that, and the wind running through my hair, you don't have any hair, you're not listening to me. That's romantic comedy dialogue right there. That is, there is not, I can't, how is that dialogue in a movie about serial killers? Like, okay, technically in this movie, I guess, I guess hypothetically maybe the only serial killer is Cletus, but in, in the comics, you know, Venom does actually kill people, which barely, anyway. And Venom very nearly eats a mugger. And he's hanging out when Anne calls, like... There are, there are jokes like that in movies that are much, much older than this one. So it's... That is that is definitely not something. Should, anyway, the cat, Mr. Belvedere, comes. I'd like to start with the cat. You know, Mr. Belvedere comes up a, f a few times. <laughs> you know, he he gets mentioned. Not I I guess. Less times than he did in the first one, but, yeah. Anyway. Well, I did not mean to make the camera bounce. I think yeah, it's it's okay. Where it is now, I mean. And I like that you know when when Eddie and Anne talk, Anne can tell that Venom is back, and you know she's like the the. She, yeah, she she straight up says Venom. Don't make him, don't let him make any mistakes, okay, you know, and then, and then Eddie gets on his motorcycle and drives really fast, 
towards like oncoming oncoming traffic and it's like I this this movie I I can't believe the movie actually went there. He and and he's like, "Well, what do you care, Venom? You're you you know, you can heal everything. You never care about consequences." And Venom has to be like the the you know, the good friend that that gets, you know, he he makes the turn away, you know, Eddie was going to drive directly into that that car that was driving towards him so that would have been a very bad you know he, he would have gotten seriously hurt and you know, maybe he, venom can heal it but still it's you know and and you know venom gets him to stop driving and he's like it's it's okay well he even says i can't heal emotional pain it hurts more and it takes longer to heal I how is something I mean I don't I guess it's not profound but it is like there is a there is a thing there of like there's a there's a grain of truth there but this is it's such a silly and ridiculous movie it's just yeah and 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 the <clears throat> you know Venom or Ed, yeah Eddie gets the 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 written thing you know and and you know Venom is like are you pen pals with an ant which you know Is that one of the ants that goes to the church for ants? No, never mind. And let's see. Yeah, the the we get animated backstory for Cletus, which yeah, they they managed to fit in his backstory from the comics, like. You know, in in the comics, they they actually comparatively they spend more time on it in the comics. I'm almost certain than in this movie, but they managed to fit you know a ton of stuff in there. You know, he kills his grandmother. His mother is beaten badly by his father. It's put in the orphanage. Yeah, you know, it's... hug, kiss, hug, kiss, smiley face, winky emoticon. <laughs> also. If you don't think that this movie is actually a romantic comedy, or at the very least about an actual ab about the actual couple of Eddie and Venom, when they get when they you know yeah they basically have a breakup, they have a fight. They're like they're they're like abusive partners, you know like. Venom picks up all of these things that are important to Eddie and throws them out the window. That's 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 not how an alien symbiote that feeds on human brains and kills quite a few people. It tries, you know, after a while it starts only killing bad people, but it's still killing a lot of people. But it's throwing it's an expensive TV out the window. Because it wants to emotionally hurt Eddie. I just... And I like that, you know, Eddie grabbed Venom's tongue and, and pulls. That does make sense as a, as a, what's it called? 
weak spot, you know, and, and he knocks out a bunch of his teeth and they just grow right back. I find it, I, I, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be like black comedy, but it seemed like Eddie didn't really care what Venom might do. Like, he's upset that Venom is breaking his motorcycle, but he's not like, oh no, without me to stop him, he's going to go out there and he's going to eat people alive. He's just like, I'm going to miss my bike. That sucks. This sucks, man. Nobody has it worse than me. That thing is out there eating people, killing them, eating their brains. And I'm right here without a motorcycle that works. I, th I, th it must be supposed to be like a dark joke, right? And, and I'm fine with that. I love dark jokes. Love them. I'm just not. Did, I don't know. It's me. Maybe it's me. I just felt like it didn't really land. Like, I'm fine. You you can make some super dark jokes, and you know, Julian Nolke just did an excellent video with some really great dark jokes. Let me think. Eulogy for a person who died from electrocution. Some something along those lines. You know, if you if you look up Julian Nolke, it's currently her most recent video. Excellent video. Those jokes land. I didn't feel like the joke in this just you know later on when he's talking to Anne he does actually acknowledge you know he's probably out there eating bad people for oh I he might actually be eating good people too because you know that that was my rule he he never really agreed on you know I I would have sure I we would have we 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 didn't shake on it because technically my you know when when he his hands are usually covering my hands so anyway and we have the execution scene and 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 Cletus you know becomes carnage and escapes and you know he he goes up to this this guard and the guard is like please i got a family eat them I told you I like dark jokes. Carnage turned into a tornado briefly. That is that is the thing that actually happened in this movie. And if you, I'm I'm just I'm I'm saying it because that way, if you just watched this movie recently and you're still trying to figure, did that actually happen? Yes, it happened. We're not we're not crazy. The filmmakers are crazy, and they put the crazy in this. I, I forget it. That might actually be a thing he can do in the comics, or hypothetically could if he wanted to. But that doesn't even. It does like no characters. Like, is that a symbiote? Charna? It just. It just happens, and then they move on. And Eddie puts the chickens. You know, he he. Places them on this little bit with with some grass and like later he comes back to that place and they're still there. I mean, I, I think that's the implication. I don't think the idea is supposed to be that oh you know he he ended up putting them somewhere else and then he took them back out and put them. The idea that they would be in the exact same spot. Oof. I'm not asking for realism in a movie this wild. I'm just saying that is not chickens with as much freedom as it looked like the two of them had are not going to just stay put. They're going to they're going to try to find they're going to look for food in any spot that is at all accessible to them. I don't know how to cope with the fact that Venom went to a rave in this and they're like that's a great costume and he's like you can see his mouth you can see his he's opening and closing his mouth he's his lips are forming words 
how do you still think it's a costume? And, and like, oh yeah, you, you could just have him, like, cover his mouth when he speaks to, to make it less, like, and someone pointed out, it's apparently, like, an LGBTQ plus thing that, like, which I'm all for. I, you know, the, the, doesn't matter who you love, how you love them, whatever, you deserve the exact same rights. Consent is the one thing, you know, if you get consent, then, you know, 100%, you do you, or whoever else you feel like doing. I support it. And I, like, I hope the, the, you know, I'm not in one of those communities, so I can't. I hope it is. I hope the people, I hope people feel seen, feel validated, feel, you know, I, I hope it works. I'm not, I'm not trying to take that away from anyone. I just personally do think it, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure that I, if I had to guess, I think the movie probably could have done better on it, but you know, I, I saw someone saying, you know, it's it's earnest. It it like it's just it's it's a it's an interesting vehicle to to use this symbiote. Like I'm I'm just it's not like Venom is just this. I mean. Venom does do the things that conservatives say LGBTQ people do. You know, he he eats brains and like yeah, so so I don't know, I guess someone realized, oh hey, you know, this is already how conservatives think that it's I don't know. I hope you know, I I hope that it it's it it helps LGBTQ people feel empowered. I that that would be excellent. I I 100%. It, yeah, you know, the the Venom gives a speech at the rave and is cheered on and ends by saying lethal lethal protector out and performing a mic drop and then the you know, the other person, like, the the one who was performing before, she's like, wow, that's a tough act to follow. It's... And so, Eddie finds this, this tree where it's carved CK plus FB. Facebook? I mean... Facebook is a villain, so I yeah I, I could see that. And I do like the detail that Frances can type messages, but she doesn't. You know they don't give her a. Uh, uh, she doesn't have like uh, any kind of microphone in her. You know. They can transmit sounds to her, but she can't transmit sounds out to them because she'd be able to hurt them. So they gave her this typing pad, and at one point, you know, Cletus types. I f yeah, I, th I think she, you know, Dr. Kafka, which is terrible besmirched. Uh, you know, Kafka was an ingenious author. But anyway. You know, not not some sadistic warden type. Anyway, but you know, she's like, oh, you know, they say they don't even know what Cletus is, which, I mean, hypothetically, maybe he's escaped and he's coming right here to rescue you. In which case, I should probably not be tormenting you right now. I I don't. I'm gonna move on. And then you know, Francis like, I she types something. And yeah, and then the Kafka warden says, 
I don't know where he is or some, something like that. And then, you know, somehow the, the, on the machine it types, I'm right here or something like that. And then Cletus is right there. Now. I know that the following did happen in the movie because I remember seeing it and you know to to back up I, mean, I didn't just I didn't make this up Cosmonaut Variety Hour brought it up in his video apparently Carnage can hack like just get him to a computer that is that can access the internet and he can hack into this military and, and get this top secret information about exactly where she's kept. Just, yeah. And Cletus stole Frances her dream car. He remembered what would be her dream. And that's actually why, like, we see him steal the car. And at the time, it just seems like, oh, you know, maybe he likes the color or whatever. Because he, he is like, oh, I have to see a list. And then later it's like, no. It's because he saw that car and he thought of her and he wanted to give. That's, yeah. And Carnage is like throwing cars around like they're, you know, toys, basically. I guess that's why they call him Carnage. That was, I, I quite like that. Like he, you know, he, suspends in the air and reaches out and you know all these cars and just throwing them around you know that that scene alone was more fun a, a more fun sort of use of like strong symbiote powers than anything in the first movie I'm, I'm not saying it's necessarily a better action scene overall than the SWAT fight in the first one which I know not everybody loves it and I do have issues with it but I do think it does some things right. But yeah, it, it was it was a good scene. And it's the kind of thing that Carnage would do. Because, you know, I, imagine being in one of those cars. Imagine you're like, you're just driving. And then suddenly you get picked up and thrown through the air in your car. Like, it's already like, it is not a good thing to be thrown through the air. Even if you hit something relatively soft. But a car, if you're inside a car, like, you know, the car's going to hit something hard. It's going to, like, crumple together like like a, uh, like a like an empty can or something with you inside of it. Just, oh, that's got to be horrifying. Did I say just driving? I guess, were, were they all police cars, the ones you grab? A anyway, nevertheless, you know. I mean, they're just trying to stop a serial killer, and that's how they get Yeah. So, Venom. Venom gets to Mrs. Chen, and, like, I, I saw someone, a YouTuber, point out. Mrs. Chen seems more worried about Venom than the guy who he just killed to get there. And I'm I'm like, so I guess he's not eating brains. But why not? Wasn't that the whole reason? Wasn't that why he broke up with Eddie? Or is it just, is it only about that he didn't get credit? It just, it's, yeah. You know, it's, okay, fair enough, fair enough. That's very realistic. I I have experienced an argument with one of my partners where I could not for the life of me figure out what it was they thought should have been done different. And the thing that the, yeah, that's, that's actually a bit of, that's, that's realistic writing right there. And the, yeah, so, so I want to say his name is Mulligan.
Mulligan. Yeah. The the so he he tells Eddie about Cletus and you know Eddie makes a phone call and it's to Anne because like I I feel like if Eddie called anybody else he's seriously worried that they just would not pick up the phone or that they would hang up the moment that he said that he was calling from that that you know he was in police custody or or you know whatever exactly it was which is also like okay so Eddie prime suspect in this thing how where this weird giant alien thing is like killing people there's a giant thing there and it's killing people Let's let's get that Eddie guy. Let's um let's let's maybe make sure that he doesn't leave the 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 city cuz this is like yeah. And Eddie realizes Cletus must have a symbiote and I'm not saying that the Mrs. Chen is secretly Venom scene or the the um, Anne has Venom in her and is trying to get Eddie to apologize. I'm not saying that those two scenes could have been the entire movie. No, no, they couldn't have. I realize that. I get that. Okay, I'm not I'm not unreasonable here. I'm trying to not be unreasonable here, but I just really hope there's more of that in in Venom 3 if or yeah, now that I'm talking spoilers, I guess if Spider-Man something or other. I got to say I really think if if they actually try to fit Venom into no way home that movie already sounds like it's gonna have it's gonna be stuffed to the the i i hope that what they do is after may, maybe that that movie's mid credits or post credit scene has the first meeting between spider-man and and a symbiote mrs chen says to Anne, you, you know, you broke Eddie's heart. And Anne is like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about this. Look, what was it? I need, I need to talk to, was it, was it Venom maybe or something? And then she's like, what, you're gonna break his heart too? It just, yeah. And it was like for 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 maybe a minute or two, we didn't realize that Mrs. Chen was Venom yet, you know. And she like she antagonizes Dan and all this. Stuff. And it just it yeah, I love Peggy Wu's performance as Mrs. Chen. I love. Michelle Williams' performance when she's flirting with Venom, when she's when she has Venom inside her and she's trying to get Eddie to apologize, just all these it's like <laughs> when when you know Dan is like, I thought you said no more aliens. No, no, no I I meant no aliens in addition to the one that there already is and then leaves like, I thought you said only the one alien and just and and yeah you know venom doesn't want to go with anne and so anne like gets this coy smile and and does the the eyes at you know and she's like you're the smartest you're the strongest you know and just 
and 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 Dan's like, I'm still right here. Dan needs to be in more of these because he is he is one hundred percent like so many times he's the voice of reason. He's the one who points out how ridiculous this is. You know, he's he's aware. He he has reached self awareness. He is not as just blase about how ridiculous all of this is as so many characters in this movie are. And I am here for it, and I really hope they bring it back. And Shinome Part 2, or is it She-Venom? I, I feel like Shinome is, is... Anyway. And just... Yeah, the... the you know, Eddie is apologizing to to Anne, to Venom, and he's like, wrong tone, and she's like, try again, put a cherry on top, and just all, all these, and the bit with the, I, I, I do have to say, I think it would have been hilarious if somehow it turned out that Venom wasn't inside of Anne, and she was just like, I knew you had a good apology in you. Now, let's go actually get Venom. The bit where, like, you know, Eddie keeps trying to make the apology even bigger and bigger, and Venom is like, hmm, hmm. That was... That, that, was, that was a thing that actually happened in this movie. And just, and and Michelle Williams' face was just perfect, like her acting, one hundred percent perfect for for that. And let's see, yeah, and we get to the ending with Cletus, yeah, with with Carnage versus Venom. I I quite liked, you know, the the bit with. You know, Venom sees that Carnage is red, and the Dutch is a red one. You know, that whole thing. There were a few new things, but a lot of it was stuff we saw in the trailer, you know. But the, the you know, right, right after where he goes, where Venom goes, time to die. And then Eddie is like, that's the spirit. No, 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 I mean, we are going to die. Am I remembering wrong? Like, the... I quite liked, you know, I, I think they did a good job of ed of trimming it down for the trailer. The, the bit with, you know, Venom making breakfast for Eddie. And the... You know, and the, when, when we saw the trailer, I thought it was basically going to be the first time we saw Eddie. And, and Venom, you know, it was maybe even going to be the very first scene, but no, you know, it's after, because cause when you just see it in the trailer, you just assume, oh, you know, he's just like, he's he's really frustrated that uh, that, that Venom makes a mess of, his, of the kitchen when he tries to make breakfast, but no, it's after, you know, he's, Eddie's trying to cope with Anne getting married to, to Dan, you know, like maybe they like the symmetry of the symmetry, the the rhyming of of the names. And the the, yeah, you know he's he's really heartbroken about that. So Venom tries to be a good friend and you know make, like, I'm I'm gonna make you breakfast because you you know you need a, a pick me up you know some, but. Was that when they also got into an argument and then ended up leave or did that? Yeah, I, you know, in half a year or so, when the movie comes out on DVD, I'm going to get a, a copy from the library and, and see. And, and anyway, 
Let's see. What is it they said about an eye for an eye? Well, uh, I think they said that it makes the world blind and that it makes good this generic ish bad guy dialogue. And, you know, Dr. Dan with fire and sound, only without fire, oh, yeah, without sound. Wow. And. I like that we briefly saw the two humans fighting without the symbiotes as the bells toll. I appreciate that the climax does have psychology, just it's it's not only CGI. And Cletus fights Carnage, trying to get keep Carnage from hurting Francis. And that, I have to admit, I, I did not see that coming. Apparently, apparently in the movie, Venom and Eddie are a much better match than Cletus and Carnage, which, I mean, that's essentially backwards and, and then some. In, in the comics, Carnage is such a good fit for Cletus that that's actually part of why he's so dangerous, because everything that one of them wants, the other one also wants, so they just immediately do it. There's not the, the self-doubt that Venom has, because, you know, the, the alien symbiote versus this human who does have some code of morals... You know, I mean, it's essentially, I don't know if it's, it's let's see, not, not a joke punchline, but like that, but for a dramatic kind of thing, you know, the, the, the idea is that this killer alien be being is just as ruthless and unethical and, and brutal as this serial killer. You know, the, the, they come from different places, but they end up, both of them want to kill a lot, you know. And and then in the movie, they kind of reverse it. But, I, you know, I forgive it. I don't, I'm not going to lose my mind over it, but I do think it's worth noting. And Venom gets up because he realizes that Venom and Eddie are a great, yeah. I have to be honest, I briefly thought that they would actually go ahead and pull a Gwen Stacy on Anne, and I'm really glad they didn't. That would really have been just completely wrong, but... And Venom eats Carnage, which is a decision. And, I mean, what even... The... So I realized that the reason that it didn't get them an R rating... Is because it doesn't look enough like a human being. So they get away with a PG-13. But it's a living, breathing, thinking thing. Like, it's a serial killer. It's a monster. But he just eats it like it's not just... Which is also cannibalism. And let's see, not patricide, but what what's the uh, when it when it's not the child killing the father, but the father killing child murderer. That's it. It's a it's a it's a child murder is what that is, and um, yeah, and and venom. 
says he likes Dan now, although he does say, uh, I mean, he kind of got in the way, which, wow, that is, yeah. And Mulligan looks like we're going to see Toxin next time, so that's cool. And Sand Between Toes. And some MM plays over the credit and credit sequence. I think it was the new one. I don't think it was the remix of the old one, but I'm not 100% sure. And we get the mid credits scene, which, you know, Venom finds himself during the Far From Home ending in the multiverse. And I, I don't know why they felt then. Why did they make it so confusing? Because apparently Venom can travel between multiverses, but that wasn't him traveling between multiverse why would they bring it up if it's not gonna be whatever but yeah you know if you if you watched a trailer for no way home you know multiverse so yeah it's i i really really hope they didn't try to stuff venom into no way home unless it is like at the very very end you know one of the characters is like peter there's, you know, you have to do, you, in, in order to get home, you have to work with this alien thing or something, but, yeah. Let's see, I, I forget, did I write? I, no, I do not have anything else written, so. Yeah, this is a pretty good length for a video anyway. If you like this video, please comment, thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for your watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and recently the reviews and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I'll catch you next time.